Hi, we're glad that you're joining us once again. Here I am with my friend Gloria, who's part of our congregation, and we're here to share the Word of God. We're here to share the perspective, the having the understanding of how God sees things and how He wants us to see things. Gloria, how are you doing? Hi, Wilson. I'm doing good. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Let's share the Word of God. So what we're talking about here is the perspective of the father and how Jesus also shared his perspective, you know, the way God sees things and how Jesus was able to see them in the same way. And for that, I would ask everybody to go with me to Ephesians 2 verses 4 through 6. We're going to be reading in the New English translation. And it says, but God being rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even though we were dead in transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you were saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We see three points here that this group of scriptures um, emphasize. The first one being that we were made alive together with Christ, meaning that we share his mm -hmm. life. The second one being that we were raised up with Christ. When we were born again, we were raised up to a new life in Christ. We resurrected in other parts of the scriptures. It says we have resurrected together with Christ. And thirdly, but not least, it says we were seated with him in the heavenly realms. It's very nice that all this we are able to experience and enjoy because we become one with Christ. We enjoy it because Christ takes us with him in this journey of experiencing the heavenly realms, experiencing his grace and being safe um, and enjoying also what's the father perspective his view on things and it's cool because it says that everything that god did with us he did it together with christ in the yes. same way you know when in the in the last in the last um part of that scripture it says he seated us with him in the heavenly realms the heavenly realms is not an imaginary place it's not a mystical place it's not somewhere where I'm trying to get, you know, a lot of people see heaven as a destination. But what God is saying here is that the heavenly realms are our actual reality. It's not a destination. It mm -hmm. is our life presently. Yes. Yes. It's something that we're, it was always intended from the father for us to enjoy with Christ. And when Christ was going uh, to the cross, uh, we were going with him. Our sins were going. Mm -hmm. When he came back to life and he rose on the third day, we came to life with him. That's why we also experience when we are born again and we're being baptized, we are experiencing that with him. And that's why baptism isn't like a, a imaginary or pretend thing or let me, let me imagine as if I'm resurrecting with Christ. It's the reality. You know, it it's is. not a symbolism. Baptism mm -hmm. is not a symbolism of me becoming, you know, some, you know, something new. It's my reality. I am something new. Yes. And, and it's awesome to see how Jesus and his time here on earth, he was chosen to clarify the father, to yes. show with, with clarity who the father is. And that's the same thing we have been chosen to do. That's why we are sharing all of these experiences together with Christ. Yes, it's important that there is a reality in this earth and that we could be able to see it. But there's also the reality of the Father, that mm -hmm. it's our job, our responsibility as uh, believers, as a newborn Christians in Christ, to reveal the father, to reveal his perspective and his view of the things. And like you said, we're very, be clear about it with no um, doubt or no um, fear of showing the truth and the reality of the father. I know there are some examples of Jesus Christ in the scripture. Can you mention some? 
Yeah, um, let's start off with the example of Jesus uh, and the resurrection of Lazarus, right? When Jesus got the news of Lazarus being ill, um, he didn't rush, you know, oh my gosh, my best friend is sick, I have to go heal him because he had the power to do it. But what was awesome about Jesus's attitude was that he wasn't governed by emotions, not even his friendship with him rushed him to do something out of order because he knew that the whole reason um, for Lazarus's illness and later temporary death was for the son of God to be glorified. And he even told his disciples, he said, this illness is not for death. But then when he gets there, you know, Lazarus's sisters are like, you're, you know, you're a little late. He's, he's already, you know, his corpse is already rotting. It's been four days and it reeks. But Jesus was so sober in, in that he was not even moved by, by Martha's anger or disappointment in him mm -hmm. because she was not seeing the heavenly realm. She was not seeing the father's intention, but Jesus had clear that the whole reason that that happened was for Lazarus to be brought to life and show and demonstrate that he was the son of God. You know, he, he was aware of, of the situation on earth that Lazarus on earth was, was dead, but in the heavenly realms, Lazarus was just sleeping and all he came to do was bring him back to life. And in, in his, in his, Earth, in the earthly realm, Lazarus's corpse was really rotting. It was not metaphorically rotting. It was actually decaying. But the amazing thing about God's resurrection power is that when Jesus brought him back to life and he said, Lazarus, come forth, all of Lazarus's organism, his organs, his bones, his muscle tissue was restored. So that is the realm that the father is is telling us to see and to look at and to share with jesus christ not be guided by what we see on earth but be guided by what we're seeing in the heavenly realms it's amazing because he had everything um the circumstances the situations saying a different thing martha mm -hmm. uh, his friend maria or mary and her his disciples Everybody had a different perspective, but how he was sovereign, like you said, to maintain the perspective, the view of the father. And because he was in that focus, he was able to reveal it very clearly. I know there's more examples like like, for example, there's the example of, of the when he multiplied the bread. When he, yeah. Uh, could we mention that a little bit more? Yeah, we see Jesus um, preaching the kingdom of God for many days to a multitude of people. And before sending them home on their way, he tells his disciples, give them something to eat, give this multitude of people something to eat um, so that they don't pass out on their way home so that they don't faint. And somebody might be like, oh, but they were listening to the word of God. You know, don't you believe that, that they won't faint? But the thing is that Jesus was wise also. Just because he was seeing the heavenly realms, it didn't make him do things carelessly. He was very precise with his intentions and what he did. And what we see in, in the multiplication of bread, which we see it two times in the scriptures, but I'm sure it happened many other times that are not written down. Um, we see that Jesus was only brought a few fish and a few loaves of bread. He didn't ignore the fact that this was the only thing that was presented, but this earthly reality didn't limit him from manifesting the heavenly authority and power of God, the power to multiply and feed a multitude of people. So that is why the he was able to distinguish the heavenly purpose over the earthly reality. The purpose of that situation was to show a manifestation of God's limitless power. But the earthly reality was scarcity. There's not enough. So for Jesus, there was never a limitation because he he exceeded limitations when he, when necessary. It's amazing that um, there was a need, and when they find like a solution, it was with not enough. But even with that, Jesus being the Son, having the same nature 
um, understanding the Father, having his eyes focus on the Father, knowing to see what he's doing, he knew what he was able to do to be able to show that reality. I know there's there's one more scripture you would like to share before we finish this episode because we have another episode following after this one. Yes, and that would be in Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. And it says, Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Keep thinking about things above, not things on the earth. And it's so awesome to see that here is the call to action on our behalf. It says, keep seeking the things above. What here it is challenging us to do is to focus our attention, fix our attention, be intentional with what we are looking at. The action relies on us fix your eyes, search for. And that's what we see in the example of Jesus. Um, Besides all of the circumstances that were surrounding him, he was never limited, not by the economic circumstance or the religious circumstance or or political violence or, or even the limited mentality of the people that were surrounding him, as we saw in the earlier examples. But for him, there was no obstacle because he determined himself to fix his eyes on the father and fix his eyes on the heavenly realm and that's where it's on us that this is the action that we need to do it's amazing because this goes well with john chapter 5 when it sees that the son sees what the father does so then he's Mm -hmm. able it's not just to see the father and be in awe and to be wow what an amazing view but it encourages and it it gives us this responsibility to do exactly what the father is doing. So next episode has even a tons more information and revelation most and inspiration of what the father really wants us as children to do. So I know for surely all of us are going to enjoy and we're going to just have this amazing taste of the scripture and it's going to benefit, nurture our spirit, our soul, our life to go on and live how God intends us to live. So thank you for listening and enjoy the next episode. Thank you, everybody. I don't know if you want to say something else before we end. I just encourage everybody to keep listening and searching for the Father in this time and after this and at all times. And thank you so much for hearing this out. We'll see you next time. Enjoy.